Chamber of Commerce members enjoyed nine holes of golf with a twist during the Chamber picnic. Lake Orion cyclists go off-roading on the Paint Creek Trail to inspire others to use this hidden gym. Those whose lives that have been touched by cancer came together for an annual event, but would Mother Nature cooperate? Camp Aguam held their first open house this weekend. Stay tuned right here on ONTV News to see what the campsite had to offer. Hello, I'm Katie Shimatero. And I'm Jonathan Jax. We'll have these stories plus much more right here on ONTV News. Throughout the year, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce offers its members numerous opportunities to network. Recently, the Chamber held a fun event that allowed its members to enjoy the summer weather. On Thursday, June 4th, the Chamber hosted its fifth annual summer picnic. It was the fourth year the event has been held at Willow Creek Golf and Sports Center. The event started out with members enjoying nine holes of miniature golf with a fun twist. We have an amazing intern in our office from Ashland University. Her name's Hannah Matar, and she put together a little game at each hole. So we had holes where you got to wear a funny hat. We had holes where if you had the most strokes, um, you had to sing a song. Stop! Um, so there was just a fun game to do at every hole to kind of mix things up. Following the golf outing, attendees enjoyed a box lunch courtesy of Jersey Mike's. Raffle prizes were handed out and new members were introduced, including members of the Chamber's junior membership program. The main purpose uh, of the Chamber, or one of them, is to get people out meeting each other and get businesses meeting each other and networking. Um, and we are always looking for different ways to do that. Um, we have speakers at some of our events that inform people about important business issues. And at other events, we just like to have fun and provide people with an opportunity to really build a relationship. If you would like to get involved with the efforts of the Orion Area Chamber, including the Junior Membership Program, visit their website at orionareachambers.com or give them a call at 248-693-6300. Paint Creek runs right through the heart of Lake Orion before feeding the Clinton River. For more than a decade, students from Scripps Middle School have helped gather information about the water quality of Paint Creek and its effect on the environment. On Friday, May 29th, more than 100 students from Scripps Middle School arrived on the grounds of the Orion Art Center. Five stations were set up that allowed students to run a variety of tests to check the water quality of Paint Creek. We have five rotations today. Uh, we have the chemical tests where students will test things like the phosphate, pH, and nitrates in the river. We have the physical uh, tests which include the width of the river, the velocity, they'll look at the plants near the river and see if that is indicating how the river is growing, how it's the, the health of the river. We have the bug station, the benthic macroinvertebrates, a favorite of everybody's where they collect the mucky muck from the river and then pick through it to find their benthic macroinvertebrates and we use the identifications of those bugs to tell the quality of the river because some bugs can tolerate pollution and some can't. So they do some calculations and that helps bring the whole puzzle together. We also have a land use station. Uh, there they'll be looking at what might impact the river. What kind of land uses do humans have around here? Is it urban? Is it rural? Is there agriculture? Is there any farming? Um, is there any drainages that are coming into Paint Creek and how that might impact the river? And the last station is the Orion Art Center. Um, they have a special display right now, a special show called Recreate Recycled Art. So the students are actively looking at these pieces of art and then they get to make their own recycled art piece. So. Volunteers from the GM Orion assembly plant helped coordinate tests at each of the five stations. For 11 years, the information gathered by students has helped the Clinton River Watershed Council monitor conditions of the creek and create reports that show that the health of the creek has been steadily improving over the past decade. Back in the day, the water quality used to be really bad. It was polluted. We couldn't go swimming. We couldn't fish. Nothing was pretty much living in it. And now today, we're finding a lot of um, organisms that show that the water quality is really good. 
Well, General Motors as a whole uh, has been committed to helping both the river and communities uh, be involved with knowing how the river quality is and how their community is. So Jim has had an initiative for a number of years. I've been involved for the whole time that I've been with General Motors, uh, which has been over 15 years. So that's pretty much how we do it and why we do it. Um, we did chemical tests, including uh, the nitrate and phosphate and uh, oxygen tests in the river and temperature. What did you learn from that? Um, the river had a lot lower temperature than I thought it would be. We did the macro invertebrates, so we count the bugs and see how the water is compared to like their living conditions and stuff, and that was cool. Ah, uh, yeah, it was really cool to see all of them like floating around in these little like ice cube trays and stuff. And I think a lot of people liked it because they got to go in the river. I hope they appreciate the environment a little bit more. This, along with our field trip to General Motors, the Orion plant, and Eagle Valley Landfill, all really work together to see what's happening in our community and how, as individuals, we can help protect the natural environment. The mission of the Clinton River Watershed Council is to protect, enhance, and celebrate the Clinton River and its surrounding area. For more information, visit crwc.org. This past weekend, Camp Agawam held its open house where parents and kids were able to explore the campsites and learn about the camp itself. The camp offers many different activities and is a hot spot for anyone who enjoys the outdoors. ONTV's Monica Nowak has more. Welcome to the one and only Camp Agawam, where they held their first open house today. Let's check out the campsite and what they have to offer. Camp Agawam was formed in 1918 and still remains in operation today. This day camp held its open house this past weekend and invited parents, kids, families, and friends to explore the camp and its beautiful sites. The nearly 100-year-old campground is still operated to this day. Previous years, news stories indicated Camp Agawam was sold and being developed as a subdivision, but those stories were false and it's not the case at all. According to Lake Orion residents, many people were upset about the possibility of the camp closing. The organization is focusing strongly on membership growth. Orion Township bought the park about probably six to eight months ago, and we are opening the park now on a daily basis. It'll be open from dawn to dusk, and we have a whole variety of facilities that are here at the park. Um, we have lodges that are available to be rented. We have picnic shelters. There's about seven picnic shelters three different lodges on the facility and we also have camping sites where um, we can have you come in with either tents or um, campers like kind of pop-up style anything that's a large trailer we don't have the facilities for those types of camping so it's going to be rustic camping we have uh, pit toilets and um, we also will have um, showers available at one of the locations, so you're able to come and rent the facility for that type of thing. Another rumor was that the property was sold to Oakland County for its park system, and once again, this was ruled out. The camp is now up and running. Members who were in charge of the camp were present and even had a fun special educational lesson about plants and where to spot poison ivy. We also will be doing a series of classes and programs. We're partnering with Oakland County Parks this summer and they'll be on site doing three different activities today as part of the open house. They'll have a go fish program that will teach um, children how to do casting and fishing. We'll have one on geocaching and that'll be in July. And then our final one will be on go golf and that'll be in August. Um, just that, I'd really encourage people to come out and explore the facility. It's a wonderful park. It's a very natural setting. There are walking paths here. We're going to have a bird watching group and also a walking group. Those two groups meet on Mondays and on Fridays. At 9 o'clock is the walking group on those two days. And then bird watching is at 10 o'clock on Mondays and Fridays. The camp has about 135 acres of land and had roughly 9,000 Boy Scouts and volunteers coming to the camp each and every year. For those who are interested in the camp or to just check out the beautiful sites, members and volunteers welcome those to stop by and explore. The camp is located on West Clarkston Road in Lake Orion. The future of Camp Agawam looks like it will be a great success. 
Plenty of people showed up for this beautiful day for Camp Aguam to learn about butterflies, fishing, and different types of plants. And if you're the type of person who's very adventurous, then this is the place that you want to be. For more information about this camp itself, you can visit the website. Reporting from Lake Orion, I'm Monica Nowak for ON TV News. Thanks, Monica. Each year, residents in the Oxford Orion area come together to do battle with cancer during the Relay for Life. ON TV's Joe Johnson was there for the kickoff of the event. On the morning of Saturday, May 30th, 27 teams made up of over 300 participants gathered at Friendship Park in Orion Township for the start of the Orion Oxford Relay for Life. Following an opening ceremony that recognized sponsors and volunteers, walkers began their first lap around the park with the goal of having at least one team member on the track for a 24-hour period. It's a camp out to fight cancer. Um, teams form, they walk the track, uh, you have 5, 10, 15 people, some as large as 100 team, you know, person teams uh, that come out, they camp out for the day and uh, we fight cancer for 24 hours. Now in its 10th year, the teams come up with creative ways to raise funds for the American Cancer Society. Throughout the park, teams set up tents where they have bake sales, play games and sell trinkets. Most of the participants take part in the event because the life of a friend or family member had been affected by cancer in some form. So Team FAB, FAB stands for Fighting a Battle, and our team consists of all high school students from Lake Warren High School. We are all kids here, all for a common cause to fight back against cancer. All of us have someone who related who had cancer. Um, one person on our team, actually their dad, who helped us last year, passed away from prostate cancer. That's why we're all wearing blue. And on the back of our crew necks, they say, in loving memory of Greg Tate. Uh, my mom had breast cancer, so I like to do it for her. And I have a lot of aunts that have, and both my grandparents. How about you? What's your motivation? Doing it for her mom. Oh, yeah. You're, you're really close to her? We're best friends. <laughs> we are best friends. <laughs> Um, we do it because we want to have more birthdays. We want everyone to live a long, happy life. So. How about you? Why do you do this? Um, a lot of like my family has had cancer, and I think it's just something that we all need to fight for. We do it because we have several people in our school and in our class that have had um, losses to cancer and are currently going through cancer treatments. And so we thought this was the most important event for us to be at so we could show our support for those families. Speaking of fundraising dollars, give people an idea of, of how this money raised today is going to be put to use. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it goes to use right here in your own community through programs and services such as Road to Recovery, um, Look Good, Look Good, Feel Better programs for women who um, are facing chemo with hair loss. Road to Recovery is a transportation program for people um, who may not need to have a ride to treatment, as well as cancer research. Um, those research dollars are so important because they fund the cure that we need. So um, amongst many, many other things, those are some of the key, key uh, programs that the money that raised here today will go to fund. So. The goal for this year's event was to raise $105,000, with over $50,000 raised before the teams ever took to the course. Unfortunately, the skies opened up later in the afternoon, drenching participants. In the evening, temperatures dipped into the 40s and thunderstorms rolled in, forcing organizers to call off the event. From Friendship Park, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. Despite the rain out, the event still managed to raise $60,880 as of June 1st with more coming in. The team raising the most money was Hope Kills Cancer with over $8,687 raised. For more updates or to get involved with next year's events, go to the Relay for Life Oxford Lake Orion Facebook page. Up next, the Orion Center helped residents clean out their closets and make a few bucks in the process. And in a new segment, we introduce you to a longtime Owen TV producer. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more Owen TV News. Hello, I'm Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard. And I'm former Detroit Red Wing Joe Coaster. We'd like to remind you to practice safe boating by knowing the laws regarding water safety. Please make sure you have the necessary safety equipment on board and be sure all of your equipment is working properly before leaving the dock. And the probability of being involved in a boating accident nearly doubles when alcohol is involved. Always check local weather conditions and if you notice darkening clouds, Play it safe. Get off the water. Have a safe, enjoyable summer on the lake. Welcome back to ONTV News. ONTV is excited to announce its newest segment, ONTV Spotlight, where we interview ONTV program producers about their shows. 
For our first Spotlight Report, I sat down with longtime ONTV volunteer Will Vaughn about his show, Fishing with Will. Let's check it out. For those who don't know, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I can just say my name is William Vaughn. I'm, I'm 39 years old. I live in Lake Orion. I've been a resident of Lake Orion for almost 10 years now. Um, I'm, virtually, I'm virtually from Houghton Lake, Michigan, which I'm sure a lot of people know up north. Well, Houghton Lake is like, it's, a, it's fun. It's like up north. It's mm -hmm. really beautiful. All right, all right. And now your show, you do fishing, of course, but what is it you love most about fishing? The fight. Hmm. The fight of the fish, because just feeling something at the end of the line talking back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's that, that back and forth you and the fish have, you know, will he go for it? Or will he, will he, yeah, will, or will he break the line or will he, <laughs> or am I going to land this big thing? That's right, that's <laughs> right, yeah. Now, how did you actually come to receive your fishing license here at, uh, um, you know, Lake Orion? Well, the DNR makes you purchase them every year, so it's mm -hmm. like you go. To, I went down to Kmart, which our, is our we have a local Kmart in Lake Orion, and I went down there and I obtained my license. I said, I like to purchase the 2015 fishing license. And they you just they give you like run your ID and they give you the license. Okay, okay. And is it a hard process? Is it easy? Something? Well. If you, it, it's really easy if you, like, the only hard process I think about is if you don't have, like, you got to have either a driver's license or a Michigan State ID. Mm, okay. But it's, they're pretty easy to, I mean, they're pretty affordable. I'm, I'm, I've heard a lot of complaints mm. over, because they changed a lot of stuff what the DNR did. Like, they've kind of raised the price of the license. But I keep telling everybody, it's worth it. You catch 20 fish, you just paid for your license. Mm -hmm. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And now you, when you, you fish around here in Lake Orion, but I also know you fish around in, you know, Oakland County itself. Would, what would you say is the best place to fish in the area? <laughs> My favorite place, and everybody always sees me on M24, is uh, Buckhorn Lake. Buckhorn Lake, okay. And at Buckhorn Lake, what is it? What, what kind of fish do they have there? Uh, bass and pike. Uh, recently, I was, I've been telling, I've been telling all my, all, the, all of our, all of the, our neighbors in Lake Orion. I'm like, you know, you just watch my show, and I'll you used to be seeing pictures. I just caught two bass and buckhorn that were over 20 inches. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. And what would you say is the largest fish you've actually ever caught out there? Um, the largest bass I probably caught out of there, the largest fish of leghorn, is, it was about 25 inches. 25 inches. Yes, that the largemouth bass. I believe it. We, I keep telling people, we fishing with Will is where we catch the big ones. Well, <laughs> that's one of my big ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but has like when you see my show, I mean, everything I do on the show, I show people what I'm doing, what I'm using. Then we gotta say. It, 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 everything, I mean, I tell everybody, it's everything is done in a process, but it's fun. Mm -hmm. And the main reason, too, is I started this show was because a lot of our kids in Lake Orion, they get in trouble. If you read, if you read the Lake Orion Review, you always hear some ki the kids are breaking into this, they're destructing this, mm -hmm. they're doing that. And I'm like, you know what? we got to get more kids into the sport. Okay. Yeah. Because it's, it's a peaceful sport. It's a relaxing sport. You have fun while doing it. Yeah. But like you said, it's a bit of a battle. You know, yeah. you've got a, you against the fish, you know, and who, who will win, you know, in the turnout. So I like that. I like that. Now, the fish that you catch, well, do you ever, do you ever eat them or? No, what? actually, I, um, I, I have a fishing ministry and that uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I kind of clip it in with my show. But if you, like, if you heard about the free meal program, the, I think it's Love Inc. that puts it on. It's called uh, okay. Love in the Name of Christ. They do a free meal program. Well, Monday night at the Oxford, at the, not Oxford, <laughs> the Methodist Church in Lake Orion do a free Monday night dinner. And I go up there almost every the week with a big cooler full of everything I've caught through the week. I'll put it, I, my aunt always asks me, well, nephew, why are you putting all that in the fridge? I'm like, auntie, we're getting rid of it. <laughs> I'm like, I know people need it. I got to do something to make a difference in this town. All right. Someone has to step up and say, you know what? I want, I'm not doing this just because I think it's fun, but I'm doing it because I care. I'm a caring person. I've always been, I was taught like that. You, you care about others. Mm -hmm. And you really enjoy it. And that's, that's why we appreciate having you on the show and having you here at Owen TV. Well, that's all the time we have for today. This has been my interview here with Will Vaughn from Fishing with Will. You can catch his show right here on Owen TV or on our YouTube page. On Saturday, June 6th, the Orion Center held their annual closet clean-out in the parking lot of the Orion Center. The Orion Center hosts three garage sales every year, two indoor and one outdoor. The summer outdoor closet clean-out allows people from around town to buy a parking space and set up a booth to sell their treasures. 
The event is free to shoppers. If you missed this year's event, gather up your goodies for the next indoor closet clean out this September. This event acts as a fundraiser for the Community Programs Department. For more information, log on to orienttownship.org. As summer quickly approaches, more and more outdoor activities are being offered to the public. And on June 6th in downtown Lake Orion, another was taking place, known as the Paint Creek Crawl Cycling Event. This is the fifth annual Paint Creek Crawl to take place in Lake Orion, and it starts and ends at the Serene Children's Park in the downtown area. However, the trail requires cyclists to go as far as Rochester in order to complete it, which takes on average around an hour and a half to two hours to finish. As a fundraiser for the Paint Creek Trail, this is our fifth annual event. Um, this, this fifth year is our most uh, successful year because we have right now, as of speaking with you, 239 riders. Our first year we had 150. All the proceeds go to our nonprofit Friends of the Paint Creek Trail Group um, for trail improvement projects. And so uh, we're just very excited to have a beautiful day and have everyone ride the trail and just enjoy, enjoy what the trail has to offer. Participants of all ages were allowed to join in on the fun, while those 16 and older were entered into a drawing for a $500 gift certificate to Main Street Bicycles. Not only that, but cyclists also enjoyed a poker ride at various stops along the trail, with the best poker hand at the end of the ride winning a total of $250. The money that's raised from these type of events go for trail improvement projects. Uh, some of the projects that we have done in the past include adding a new drinking fountain on the trail, right near our Tinkin Road trailhead. We've added bike repair stations along the trail. Uh, there's currently one at the Paint Creek Cider Mill. Uh, we're adding one at the Atwater Terminus here in the village of Lake Orion. And we're going to be adding another one at the Tinkin Road Trailhead as well. Um, one of the bigger projects we're working on fundraising for right now is an educational side path project, which is located in Rochester Hills just north of Tinkin Road. We're going to have, um, it's going to be pedestrians only, and we're going to have uh, displays on uh, that are built that talk about things such as native plants versus invasive species, maybe some trail history, trail etiquette, the importance of the Pink Creek as um, the designated trout stream in the area. So we're hoping to add this quarter mile pathway within the next two years to give trail users a, a chance to learn a little bit about the trail and kind of walk off the beaten path, if you will. The annual Paint Creek Crawl is just one of many events taking place in downtown Lake Orion this summer. For more information on outdoor activities and family fun this season, visit their website at paintcreektrailfriends.org. That's all the time we have for this edition of ONTV News. For daily updates on what's happening right here in Lake Orion, like our Facebook page and follow us on YouTube. On behalf of the hardworking staff here at ONTV, I'm Katie Shimatero. And I'm Jonathan Jackson. Thanks for watching.